What up, y'all? This is Tracy from Nerd Squish, and today we're gonna talk about what to wear to Halloween Horror Nights. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Halloween Horror Nights 2022 is creeping upon us, and you know what that means. We're planning outfits. What are we gonna pack to wear to this beautiful, spooky event? I know I stress about it every year because I just genuinely stress about everything, specifically what to wear. Today I'm gonna give you a few options and tips that I've found over the years that have worked for me, and hopefully these tips and tricks might help you for this year's event. Before we go any further, if you're new here, this is Nerd Squish, where we take everything spooky and we take everything nerdy and we squish it all together. So if you like Halloween Horror Nights, horror movies, and pop culture, definitely hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos from us in the future. I wanna start off by saying that all these outfits are for Orlando weather, not Hollywood. Orlando weather and Hollywood weather are not the same. So needless to say, if you're going to this event in Hollywood, you can be a bit more stylish without the fear of a heat stroke. So my overall goal when I'm planning outfits for Halloween Horror Nights is to be spooky and to be comfortable. Comfort is key when you are going to a theme park. Now, I don't care if you're going to the theme parks during the day or if you're just going to the Halloween Horror Nights event or if you're doing both. It's a lot of walking. And I mean, especially if you're doing the parks during the day and horror nights at night, comfort is key. And I know it's fall, it's a Halloween event. You wanna dress spooky. You wanna wear flannels and your cute, you know, combat boots and really just have fun with your outfits, but dress accordingly. This is Florida. So my favorite outfit combo for Halloween horror nights is a horror tee, some shorts, and the comfiest tennis shoes you can find. What I've always done in the past is match my horror tees to the IPs that they have featured at the event that year. So for this year, rock that Michael Myers shirt or Universal Monsters shirt. If you have a weekend tour shirt, that would be really cool. Or of course, any freaky or black phone merch that you can find. Another thing that a lot of people do in the parks is wear their Halloween Horror Night shirts of the past. So rep the years that you've been. It's a great thing to wear and you'll get discussions in the queue line for the houses of people have been like, oh my God, I went that year. I loved this house. So wear your past HHN shirts like a badge. As you can see, I have my shirt from last year, the little rigger tee. I love this shirt. Another type of shirt that I really like to wear if you wanna be a little bit more cute and fancy than just a regular old t-shirt is a cute button down crop top. So I have this really cute Universal Monsters. It's a button down crop top that ties up. Got this from Hot Topic like a year or so ago. Definitely gonna be rocking this at the park this year for the Universal Monsters house. And the great thing about these shirts is that it's a little bit like you know, a little something extra than just a t-shirt. But the good thing about them is they're still like super thin and breathable, so it's really great for that Southern humidity. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to find that particular shirt, because like I said, I got it from Hot Topic a couple years ago. Although you might be able to find it on Depop, you never really know. But Spirit has tons of shirts like that this year. This is um, a pumpkin one that I actually wore to the park last year. But this year they have a bunch of new cute designs. They have a ghost face, a Friday the 13th, and one that's like a traditional Halloween. It's white with these like vintage Halloween designs, which would be really good for the overall vintage Halloween vibe that they got going on for this year's event. And shorts are obvious because it's hot. Now, there's nothing wrong with a good old pair of jean shorts. That's my go-to. But if you can find really fun designs that kind of incorporate some of the monsters or IPs that are featured at the event, that's a really fun thing to do too. So I have this really great pair of lightning shorts. I love these shorts so much. I got them from Shein a couple years ago. I don't think they're still available on the site, but you might be able to find something similar somewhere else. And just the monster vibes. I mean, does this not scream Frankenstein? And you could pair something like that with just a simple basic black tank top or crop top and incorporate fun spooky earrings to go along with it. So when I wear those shorts, I will definitely be rocking my Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein earrings. The great thing about these earrings is they're super cute, feature Frankenstein and his bride, but they're super lightweight. They're, you know, not super big that they're gonna get like all up in my way. So these are a great way 
to make a monster outfit. Another great option that's really gonna keep you cool and comfortable as far as shorts go is just your little track shorts, like little basketball shorts. Ignore the hair that's on them, but these are so great for the theme parks and they go with any spooky tee. Now I usually wear shorts, but I would also recommend some black, lightweight, silky, like athletic style leggings. Now, you ask, <laughs> you just said you don't want like fabric sticking to your legs, why would you suggest leggings? <laughs> well, last year I experienced a first for me at Halloween Horror Nights. Now I didn't intend to be at the event on opening weekend, but I had evacuated for Hurricane Ida. So we got our tickets moved around and managed to go on opening night. And you may already know that there seems to be a curse on opening night where it always has a torrential downpour. Now, I've been in the park before where it's rain, cause it's Florida, you know, it like rains all the time, but normally it's like, oh, we're gonna like drizzle a little bit, maybe for like 30 minutes and we're cool. That's not what this was. It was a torrential down poor, okay? Like seriously, one of the haunted houses had to be closed for a short while because it flooded. On this particular night, I had a pair of high-waisted shorts and they had like the little cuff, you know, at the bottom of them. And when I got so soaked, they became baggy and soaked and started rubbing on my thighs. And I created the worst thigh chafing known to man. When I tell you I was walking out of this park like a cowboy at the end of the night, it wasn't pretty. So we had planned to go the next day as well and I knew, I was like, my thighs, they have to be divorced. Like they're, they're fighting right now, it's not good. So I had to go to TJ Maxx and pick up a pair of black leggings, which was a lifesaver for the event. It was a little on the hot side. I don't know what the type of material is, but like the silkier, more athletic style leggings are gonna be your go-to because they're gonna keep you cool because they're like that dry fit material that's gonna eat up that sweat. So there are two more things that I learned from that torrential downpour at opening night of Halloween Horror Nights. You might also want to look into like a thigh rescue deodorant type product that you can put on your thighs to help with the chafing if you do plan on wearing shorts. Another thing you might want to bring with you to prepare for the rain if it happens is ponchos or some kind of a raincoat. Now the park does sell ponchos, but you're gonna pay an arm and a leg because it's a theme park and they want you to like sell your soul if you're gonna buy anything there. So maybe like go hit up somewhere cheap, get some ponchos you can just stick in a book bag to bring with you just in case. Or if you wanna get like a very thin raincoat that you can just fold up into a book bag and break out if you need it. So I always like to wear a super comfy pair of tennis shoes. And I've been wearing these particular Nikes for pretty much every year I've ever gone to Halloween Horror Nights except for the evacuation year because I didn't pack them to run from a hurricane. Now, are they the cutest things in the world? No, not really. Unless you're specifically trying to get your shoes in the picture, most pictures, you don't even see your feet. Don't wear flip flops, cause that's gonna be a disaster. Don't wear the cute combat boots, cause your dogs are gonna be barking. Be comfortable, be sensible, your feet will thank you. Now you know you're gonna need a bag for the park. You need to put your necessities in there, especially for us ladies who just don't get pockets for whatever reason. But my favorite type of purse or bag to bring to the parks is the good old mini backpack. This is the one that I've been bringing for the past couple years and I do intend to bring this year. It's great because it's tiny. It fits in even the smallest free lockers that they provide. Plus it's got a cool Universal Monsters print. So like you're repping the monsters who doesn't love that. Another accessory that you're probably gonna want for the event is the good old lanyard. And these are used to put your event tickets in. I literally still like have my event ticket in here. Now I've gotten one of these basically every year I've gone. So I have a multitude of designs. I've got the icons, Mr. Bones from like the first year we went in 2017. And probably my favorite one is this Universal Monsters design. It's not necessarily like a Halloween Horror Nights one, just one that they sell in the park all the time because monsters. Now, obviously a lanyard, you're probably gonna wear it around your neck, right? Cause that's how they're supposed to be made. But a lot of times that can mess up like a really cool graphic tee or it can be like really hot on your neck. So what I like to do a lot of times is kind of like clip and tuck it into like if you have pockets on your shorts and you know, kind of let your ticket hang. So that way it's still very easy to like whip it out when you need to scan it in the line, but it's not in the way of your t-shirt and you're not creating more sweat on the back of your neck. 
Now I am not a beauty guru, obviously. I don't have great hair. I don't have like fantastic, you know, crazy makeup. But one thing that I can tell you is for your hair, don't, don't style it. Don't, don't straighten it. Don't curl it. Don't do it. Because by the end of the night, you will be screaming, we're not gonna take it, cause you're gonna look like D. Snyder. The humidity is gonna make that thing grow. You know, you're, you're gonna have secret hiding in there, it's gonna be so big, birds are gonna start nesting in there, it's gonna be ridiculous. Between the humidity that just makes it disgusting, and if you are riding like a lot of like the rides, like for instance, if you're on the mummy, that thing's gonna whip you every which way, your hair is gonna be flying, you're gonna get off of there, you're gonna look like a disaster. Now I have seen girls come off of it and still look cute. I have not figured out the secret. My personal favorite way to put my hair up in the parks is just a good old pigtail. Nothing fancy, it gets it out the way, but it's not like horrendous because I cannot rock a ponytail. There are some girls that can rock a ponytail, but I am not Ariana Grande. We pigtail all day because I can't, I can't do the ponytail. So these guys, hair ties, I don't care if they're the little rubber bands, I don't care if they're the scrunchies, they are your friends bring them with you. Bring multiple in case they break, they fall out your pocket, you lose them, whatever. Bring hair ties. You'll thank me later. Now, if you're wearing makeup, don't forget your setting spray. We're in Florida. It's humid, it's sweaty. It's, you step outside and you're just instantly like just wet. You have a sheen and, and that mascara and that eyeliner, it's gonna be struggling. So don't head to the park without your setting spray. Don't be the joker spritz it, okay? Now these are only my suggestions. If you're a stylish person and you can thug it out in that Florida heat, be spooky, be fabulous, wear whatever you want. Also, you know, you see people in these cute outfits and a lot of times it's locals who are going like, you know, for an hour at a time a day to go see this thing, try this food, take this Instagram picture. They're not in the parks all day sweating it out to the oldies. I'm old and I'm weak. I have to be comfortable. Like, I, it's just, I have to. Like, when you're in your 30s, you wanna be cute, but you're not gonna sacrifice comfort to be cute. I'm just being honest. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite outfit was, and maybe let me know what you're gonna be wearing to Horror Nights this year. I can always use some new ideas myself. In the comment box, I'm gonna leave some links to some products, um, some that I've shown you in this video, some that I don't necessarily have, but I think would be a really, really good idea to wear to the event. So they do still have the Beetlejuice shorts at Hot Topic. They're about $30, but they always have some kind of a flash sale going on. So I think right now they're 20% off, and you can pick them up for about $23. Spirit has tons of these tie-up crop top designs with the spookiness on them. They run about $30, but you can sometimes find a Spirit coupon that gives you a little bit of a discount. I did find this incredible deal on Walmart's website for a two-pack of Halloween Michael Myers t-shirts for 17 bucks. So you're getting a t-shirt for basically $8 a piece. I think this is a great deal, especially if you're going with like a friend or a partner or spouse. You buy this and hey, you're both covered and you're matching. My Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein earrings are from an Etsy shop called Dead Girl Decor. I actually discovered her on Instagram a while back and I knew I needed these earrings and they're just super lightweight. They're like a wooden type. I guess they're wooden, I don't know. Super lightweight, they do not bother you or get in your way. This would be a great fun accessory to wear to Horror Nights. Now we all know the mini backpacks are having a moment and those lounge flies, they get pretty dang pricey. The audacity. But you can find like the knockoffs or the, you know, not lounge fly brands that you can kind of get like a little bit cheaper. I found this super great Halloween Michael Myers mini backpack at Spencer's when I went to the mall a week ago and they do have it online for $59.99. And I think this would be a perfect bag to wear to this year's event since Michael Myers will be there and you can hold all your essentials, stick it in the locker and you are good to go. When it comes to tennis shoes, any running shoe, tennis shoe will do. It doesn't matter the color, the brand, whatever. The particular shoes that I've been wearing are Nike brand and they are $70 online, but you may be able to hit up like a shoe carnival or a shoe department and find the same thing for a couple bucks cheaper. I hope that you enjoyed this video and maybe got some outfit ideas for Horror Nights this year. If you want to see more videos from us in the future, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell so when a new video hits the channel, you'll be notified. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you nerds in the fog. <laughs>